I want to ask you something like uh, when when the Israelites say that they are the uh, children of God, so does that refer to this? I mean, is it the same way that Christ said? No, because in the case of the Israelites, they are creatures created by God, but they are created to reflect God's nature and characteristics. So there is a sense in which I, as a creature, limited, am called to be a son of God, to reflect God's character to a limited extent. Obviously, I cannot reflect the qualities of God to the same degree that God <clears throat> possesses those qualities, right? But I am called to reflect his nature. So if God is loving, I'm supposed to be loving if I'm a son. If God is holy, I'm supposed to be holy. If God is patient, I'm supposed to be patient. So to be a son of God as a creature means you are called to reflect the nature of God, but to a limited extent. The reason why Jesus is called only begotten son, because unlike these other sons and daughters who are creatures, he is the son who's always existed and has no beginning. That's how John 1 starts the gospel. Okay. So uh, why in 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, verse number 28, and also in John 14, chapter to, uh, uh, John 14, verse yeah, number 28, 20, yeah. like he said that uh, God, I mean, the father is greater than him. Are you, are you subject to your father? No. So you mean you don't obey your father? So you're a wicked, evil, filthy son who disobeys your father? No, no. I understand your question. Okay, then. so are you subject to your father? Does your father have authority over you? Yes, he does. Okay, but so that means you're less less of a man because you're subject to your father. So then what are you? So well, you notice your logic really again? Mean that way. You see your logic again? You're so convoluted in your thinking, you're assuming that if I'm subject to someone, that someone is better than me and I'm inferior. So that means you're subject to your boss. So if your boss is human, then you're inferior to your boss and you're less human or you're not human. See, this is the logic you're operating under. Okay. Okay, so let's go back and explain those passages. Notice in 1 Corinthians 15, 28, it says, the son will subject himself to God that God may be all in all. So number one, he's the son and he's subjecting himself. The same word, their subject, is used in Luke 2, 51, where it says Jesus subjected himself to Mary and Joseph. Now, since Jesus subjected himself to Mary and Joseph, and Jesus is human, and yet Mary and Joseph are human, does that mean when Jesus subjected himself to Mary and Joseph as his parents, he was less human than them? No. But that's the logic you're using because you're telling me if the son is subject to the father, then he can't be God, is inferior. Where'd you get that from? You can be but subject to another... Because you're not that other. You're not the same person. But both of you can have the same nature. Even with the term greater. Is the president of your country greater than you? Yes. So that means you're less human than what are you? No, it doesn't mean in that way. Oh, thank you. So you're answering your own questions if you think a little more deeply. You can be greater in rank. Or you can be greater in nature. Or you can be greater in both. Say I'm greater than my dog in rank and nature. But I'm greater than my daughter and rank not in nature. So why do you assume that if the father is greater than the son, that means the son is less God or he's not God? Why don't you first read those verses in context instead of taking a verse here and a verse there? Because John 14, 28, is that the start of the gospel? No. John 3, 16, was that the start of the gospel? No. So notice what you did. You went and found a verse here and a verse there. Instead of reading from the beginning all the way to the end and try and understand the entirety of the gospel so you can understand what these verses mean and do not mean. And you did that with 1 Corinthians 15, 28. Chapter 15 is not the first chapter. That means you ignored the previous 14 chapters, what Paul already told you about Jesus, and then you ran to the middle of a chapter and read that out of context and misunderstood it. But that's not how you're supposed to read any book. Okay, I get it. So any other questions? Go ahead. Keep asking me. And I'm listening, but I just got to make sure my cat. Go ahead. Listen. So ask loud so I can hear you. What's the other question? Okay. So uh, can you explain me more about Trinity? Like in the Trinity, are the Father and the God and the Holy Spirit, are they equal or 
you know, according to the verse, like just I said, like he's greater as the Father is greater. So is there any rank system in yeah. Trinity? Even in John 14, 28, I've had you read the context to see that Jesus claimed the Father is greater in position because he's on earth and the status of a